This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the Tactical Awareness Display page in the A10C, also known as the TAD. The first step is to set the TAD as the sensor of interest by selecting the TAD page twice, or holding the coolie switch left long, or H key on the keyboard. The green box outlining the TAD page indicates that it is the current sensor of interest. In the center, we have our own chip symbol. Just outside of that, we have the first range circle, followed by the second range circle for the current scale, so in this case it would be 2.5 and 5 nautical miles. Now it would be 10 and 20 nautical miles. We have our flight plan, other friendly aircraft running over the network, and any friendly ground units running an enhanced position system. On the outside of the first range circle, there's cardinal directions with the triangle indicating north. In the upper left hand corner of the display, we have bulls, a bearing, and a range. This is our current range and bearing from the bullseye marked on the map. Keep in mind, like most things in the A-10, this is marked in nautical miles. The remaining information being coordinate data located in the bottom center and range and bearing in the lower right relate to the currently hooked target. As we're able to see, we can slew the cursor around. And if we slew it over a target, the hook data will change according to the target and we can hook a target by pressing TMS forward short. As we're able to see, the coordinates will update depending on the currently chosen hook settings. In this case, hook own. So it will show from the hook target to our own aircraft. Now as I change these settings, we're able to see is the hook data changes accordingly. As we're able to see, we have bullseye to hook, hook to bullseye, cursor to hook, hook to cursor, many settings that can be chosen depending on what you're currently looking for. Below the current hook settings, we have an option to create a new mission point for the currently hooked target. So, by selecting the option, it will allow us to create a new steer point directly over the hooked target when in the mission mode on the steer point selector. Selecting the mission mode on the steer point selector, cycling the steer points, we're able to see on the tad that the hooked target now has a steer point over its location. Magnification of the TAD page is done using DMS forward and aft with the TAD as sensor of interest. As we're able to see, it will also scale the map image itself. The setting above hook settings, map automatic, will allow us to go into map off as well as map manual. And as we're able to see, this will now allow us to adjust the magnification without it scaling the map and we can scale the map separately by using the upper left hand rocker switch. Along the top row of the TAD, we have a few default profiles that we can select, which will affect the symbology displayed on the TAD page. And we also have the control option. Inside the control option, we can create our own profile. To do this, we will enter the name of the profile on the UFC, and then select USB 18. At this point, we've created the new profile, and we could alter the profile by changing settings accordingly, as we see fit, and saving the profile. At this point, if we press return, we'll go back to the control page, and we can select the current profile. Profile selection can be made through OSB 19 and 20. As we'll see, one was selected, going back to default. And at this point, pressing the delete key twice will delete the current profile. Profiles can be reset back to default as well by pressing OSB 2 and then saving the profile. Underneath the current map scaling, we can see the text B off. The A-10 can broadcast its sensor point of interest to other aircraft over the network by holding the DMS left long, at which point the SPION will be toggled on, which will allow other aircraft in the flight to target your sensor point of interest and hook it for themselves. To cease broadcasting your SPI, simply hold the DMS left long again, or default delete key on the keyboard. Coordinate data format can be changed from lat long to MGRS, using OSB9, which will allow you to change the coordinate data displayed for the hook information in the lower section of the TAD display. And on OSB10, the net option, we're able to change our own and group IDs for the network. This will allow us to join other flights, such as I'm doing with the flight off to my west right now. And it will also allow us to set up our own flights, which is especially useful on multiplayer servers. The inner number displayed for the aircraft is their own ID, and the lower number is their altitude in thousands of feet. As I leave their group, we're able to see that their own ID is replaced simply by a dot in the center of the icon. The map can enter expanded mode by pressing China hat forward, at which point the map will orient north, 
It will also scale in two times. And at this point, we can slew the map over a location without having it locked around our aircraft. A second press of China Hat Forward will enter Expanded 2, which will zoom it in even further. And at which point, a third press will bring it back into normal function. When scanning with the TGP, the narrow diamond on the tab page represents the current scanning area of the TGP. Seen in this example, stacked on top of a sensor point of interest, marked as the wedding cake symbol. In the lower left of each MFCD, we have the attitude reference symbol and altitude. Altitude, with the first two digits being thousands of feet and third being hundreds, and on the symbol itself, Roll is represented by the roll of the own ship reference, with pitch being represented by the ground tie. If the ground tie is surrounding most of the aircraft, you are in a state of dive, and if it's only seen on the lower section of the own ship reference, you're in a state of climb, with level being indicated by a half circle. The final function I'll go over in this tutorial is the declutter option, which is shared by many other MFTD pages which will remove most of the outer OSB options from the display, which makes for a less obstructed view when dealing with a very cluttered up tab page. 